It is a beautiful night for baseball along the banks of the Ohio River. We're in Cincinnati, Ohio, the host of the Midsummer Classic, the All-Star Game. Not a classic last night as far as the Pirates were concerned. They were drubbed by the Red Legs, and they look to even the series tonight. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk. It's a beautiful night for baseball, and Bob, the trade line, the trade deadline has come and passed, and the Pirates did make some moves today, but one kind of surprised us, and that was A.J. Burnett. He goes on the disabled list. Yeah, I, I didn't see that coming to be honest with you, although last night uh, we saw the fluctuation of velocity when uh, he started out throwing about 86, 87, and then jumped it up there at the end uh, to 94 mile an hour with his fastball. So uh, obviously there was something going on with him. And, you know, the previous couple starts, control wasn't exactly right. Uh, he'd been so good with that all year, and you could tell he wasn't throwing the ball where he wanted to. So there was something going on with him, that's for sure. And uh, we got the answer today when we got here. He's going on the disabled list, and uh, the, the replacement will be here soon. Allegheny Health Network injury update, elbow inflammation for A.J. Burnett. So the Pirates make some other moves at the deadline. They pick up veteran Michael Morse. Jose Tavada is dealt to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Jay Happ, the veteran left-hander, probably going to step into that rotation for the time being for A.J. Burnett. Hey, you would certainly think that that's just exactly what's going to happen, uh, you know, at least until this injury thing shakes itself out and see exactly what's going on with A.J. But, you know, Happ, you look at his career, numbers. He's uh, just a little bit below a 500 pitcher. Uh, you know, this year kind of going a little bit so-so for him uh, up in Seattle. But uh, definitely uh, the way things are right now, you, you got to feel like we're lucky to have him. The Pirates getting ready to take on the Cincinnati Reds. Jeff Locke will be on the hill for the Pirates. Locke is trying to turn things around. He had a tough start his last time out, so the left-hander looks to bounce back against the Red Legs coming up next. in Cincinnati. Once again, Pirate fans on hand, hoping to see 
their Buccos even this series. And Jeff Locke on the hill for the Pirates will be looking to even his overall record. And last time out, Bob, uh, five innings, four runs, four hits, walked three against the Washington Nationals, and no decision. Pirates came back and won that game. Yeah, certainly it was not a great start, and uh, we're looking for better tonight, you know, especially after what happened in last night's ball game today. The pitching staff really took one on the chin, but you see what uh, he has done here in his career at the Great American Ballpark. Uh, one and zero with an 0.93 ERA and three starts. That's excellent, uh, especially considering uh, how what a great hitter's park this is. So hopefully tonight uh, he'll uh, have that same type of game in him and he can settle things down. Bobby Laframbeuse has uh, rejoined the Pirates as the Buccos get ready to take on the Cincinnati Reds. A.J. Burnett is on the disabled list for now. We'll go back to the studio. Rob King with a game break. Across the old plank, there's a ballpark Where the fans meet up when it gets dark On the North Shore where the flags fly high And all around the world with a glass to the sky We came here to win for our city Lay it all on the line, are you with me? We waited five days for the week to win Let it all out, come on, join your friends Got it out of Knox Yeah, it's finally here Give us something to cheer for, you know it
And we are rocking with the first pitch of the ball game from Michael Lorenzen to Gregory Polanco. Friday night rocks. 84 degrees at game time as the Pirates and Reds meet. In game two of the four game series. Gregory Polanco had a couple of hits last night. He has reached base safely in 19 of his last 20 games. Polanco with Starling Marte on deck. We'll get to the lineups here momentarily. And a little tapper. And safe at first. Lorenzen. So maybe he thought he had a little bit more time than he actually did with the long legged speedy Polanco running down the line. He fools a lot of people I think because it just doesn't look like he's a running all that fast. He puts pressure on the infield. The ball was caught he was going to be out. They give him a hit he had a bunch single to start last night's game. And that's a swinging bunt hit for Polanco. And now Marte. He had a couple of hits last night as a nine game hitting streak going. Seventeen steals on the year for Polanco. The rookie Michael Lorenzen. And the runner goes in a pitch out. And Pena with a little bit of a double clutch. Yeah, Pena, I, I don't know why he double clutched, but it looked like he had no urgency. Polanco steals his 18th. I don't see a double clutch. He just it was, was just kind of a little like a. Uh, take, it was like he's just taking yeah. his time, like he was throwing it down. Like, see that little hitch? I yeah. guess it's not a double clutch, but definitely a little hitch before he unloaded the throw. They'll run the third. <laughs> Here's the 23 year old Michael Lorenzen. Yeah, the ERA has been going up at late. The uh, last four starts had not been good to the youngster. Picked up his first big league win against the Pirates. And a check swing that Marte is acting like hit him while the Reds follow through with the play. And out comes Clint Hurdle and Ben Potenziano, the assistant athletic trainer. I, I still don't know what the call was. I don't either. Kerwin Danley just put his arms up. I don't know if he was calling a foul ball or timeout. Right now, Polanco is standing at third. Any help that works super well. Oh, right off the knob of the bat. The Pirates, of course, have had to deal with the injuries lately. The other day, Marte was scratched from the lineup with the stomach issues. That was on Tuesday against the Twins. As he is standing there, Clint Hurdle yeah. was Sit. double checking with Dave Jouse uh, for the video and asking if they should replay it, and they are going to replay it or challenge it. So it must have been called a foul ball. Then. Well, I think that's what Hurdle was standing there. He said something to the home plate umpire, Kerwin Danley, and I'm assuming Danley said, "Yeah, foul ball." Like it went off the knob of the bat. If sure they called does. that a foul ball, I don't see him overturning it. I see that Danley makes no move whatsoever. He no. just walks in front no. of the plate and looks around. Yeah, he didn't make a call. And then later, eventually, puts his arms up as if timeout was called. Yeah, he didn't know what had done happened. Meanwhile, concern about Marte. Is Clint Hurdle going to have to go to? The bench right away here. I, I thought he. I didn't know that they were. It sounded to me he said he was telling Jeff Decker. 
Now Joe West is telling Polanco to get back to second. And are they going to say Marte was hit by that's the what they're going to say. Well that's going to be. Wow. It's a break for the Pirates. Be first and second nobody out. Oh, well, it could have been a third base gonna, one out. I'm going to put my glasses on. Apparently. Let's watch this again. Well, you know, I can see where it looked like it got hand. And that, that was real slow there. I can see where it got his a lot of the got, got his wrist and, the, and the knob at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Well, it's good news he's staying in the game. On. By the way, Joe West, the crew chief. Yeah, at first, I thought for sure it just hit the knob of the bat when we watched it that first time, but and then it zoomed slow, in. slowed it way down. Well, you, could, you could see it. Uh, it hit. Hit his wrist, maybe actually first, and then caught the knob of the bat. First and second, and nobody out for Andrew McCutcheon. Three hit night last night for McCutcheon. Good call by Roach. Huh? Yeah, Kevin Roach, the videographer. <laughs> Owen won the count on McCutcheon. Kevin is the one that calls down and uh, suggests whether they should challenge or not. A couple of strikes on McCutcheon. Does he call down or they call him? I, I think they, they, call, they him. call him. McCutcheon leads the league in these situations. 416 batting average with runners in scoring position. And Lorenzen after giving up the infield hit and hitting. Marte strikes out McCutcheon on three pitches. Who's coming up next? Let's check out the Toyota starting lineup. You just saw McCutcheon. You've seen Polanco and Marte. Ramos Ramirez. It's clean up. And in his career, a couple of hits and a home run against Lorenzen. Then it's Jung Ho Gung, Neil Walker, Pedro Alvarez, Francisco Cervelli, and Jeff Locke. Ramirez his first two RBIs since joining, rejoining the Pirates. Last night's ball game. Two run double in the seventh inning. Yeah, Hamilton's playing him kind of cheap in center. And, and also. Bourgeois on uh, left. And it's hit in shallow left. And he had him played uh, just right. Just moves over a little bit. Rivers Casino tips to win. The strike early, uh, you know, I already talked uh, about uh, you know, how poorly his last four starts uh, has gone. Uh, I think I looked at it before. Here it is 17 innings in his last four starts total. He's pitched and he's given up 17 runs. So early on, let, let's, let's get to him and score some runs off of him. Line drive towards center field, sending Hamilton back, and yep. it's over his head. Jung Ho Gong gives the Pirates the lead. Unfortunately, the ball bounces over the wall, so Marte will have to go back. But Gong puts the Pirates on top. We're talking about striking early. There it and is. They'll do it. And Hamilton playing uh, really cheap out in center field, and he got burnt. Not very deep out there. Young doubles off of Lorenzen and looks like uh, Lorenzen not happy that Hamilton not able to get to it. Yeah. You know, it, it, there's there's plays that I'm sure Hamilton makes taking hits away from guys because he's playing shallow. So when one gets over his head and you're like happy when he does that. So don't show him up by throwing your hands in the air when one gets over his head. That's a good call. Bob, you're right. And I, I see pitchers doing that, and I think it looks so bad. Yeah. See veterans doing it. I mean, you see a lot of guys, and it's just, hey. How about, you know, one time if a pitcher, like, gives up a home run in your left fielder, why don't you put your arms up, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, that'd be about the same thing. 15 doubles, Gong, the rookie, his 34th RBI, continues to swing a hot bat, and now Neil Walker. A base hit can give the Pirates a 3 nothing lead with Marte at third and Gong at second. So 
Tuck Gong has really become a major part of the offense, hasn't he? Has he ever? One two count. Walker had uh, three plate appearances against Lorenzen back on May the 5th at PNC Park Lorenzen went six plus innings. Gave up three hits and a run. Walker had one of the hits. Starling Marte had a home run and Pedro Alvarez had the other hit. And a chopper. Shortstop going to make the play. And throw out Neil Walker to hit the Jesus on Tavado. But the Bucks take the early lead. Chung Ho Gong with the RBI. Two of three in St. Louis just before this homestand began last night. So they've won three straight ball games and they are eight and two against the Pirates this season. Check out his lineup. It is brought to you by Honda, Brandon Phillips, Jason Bourgeois, and Joey Votto. Todd Frazier had a night off last night. 359 average against the Pirates this season for the All Star third baseman. Then it's Marlon Bird, Brian Pena, Ivan De Jesus, Michael Lorenzen, the pitcher hits eight, and Billy Hamilton. Brandon Phillips career night last night seven runs batted in and two homers. Take a look at uh, Jeff Locke's numbers on the year and the, the, the really the big thing to remember about his numbers I think tonight is how well he's pitching this ballpark. We talked about that in, in our open a little bit for whatever reason. Uh, he loves pitching here a tough place normally to, to do well in as a pitcher. Hopefully he'll continue his impressive performances. He can really use it tonight too because uh, his buddy AJ Burnett goes on the disabled list today with uh, elbow inflammation. Locke would love to step up and really put on a good show for the Bucks. There's a number of reasons that you'd love to see a good outing from Locke. Just you know, think about last night's game, giving up 15 runs. And want to get that. Taste out of your mouth. Get the pitching back on uh, on a roll where it's been for most of the season. Really, it's all about been pitching. Chopped and Alvarez goes up to get it and does a nice job. Nice play. Getting it to lock. Brandon Phillips chopping that one to the right side, and we now check out the Pirates' defense. Brought to you by Honda. Neil Walker. He's on the right side with Alvarez, Jung Ho Gong, Aramis Ramirez on the left side, Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, Gregory Polanco on the outfield left to right. Francisco Cervelli catches Jeff Locke. Adrian Alvarez committed his 16th error last night as the Reds just hammered the Pirates. Here is Jason Bourgeois, who had one plate appearance, walked.
Jeff Locke's 20th start of the year. 41 walks, 83 strikeouts. Bob told you about the good career numbers here at Great American Ballpark. And this is chopped towards second. Walker Bourgeois runs very well, but Walker and the Pirates get the out call at first. This holds up. That's uh, regardless. It's a heck of a play by Walker. This is, this is a, you know, always a, a a weird thing for me when there's a, a real close play like that. It's like you have to wait now and see what's the other team going to do. Another look at the play as they delay to try and decide whether they want to challenge it. First base umpire Rob Drake calls it out and they will stick with it. Heck of a play by Walker. Two nice defensive plays to start the ball game for the Pirates. Yeah, that one was outstanding. <laughs> there is Joey Votto, and he has just been on one of those unbelievable tears getting on base. Opponents just cannot get him out. Uh, it Decker couldn't even get him out last night. That's right. Even Jeff Decker gave up a hit. Uh, that shows you how hot Votto is. <laughs> Had him 0 2. <laughs> Jeff De Decker, the uh, lefty, came on the eighth inning last night. Hits the scoreless eighth. I think they're talking pitching there. He and, uh, well, there's Travis Ishikawa, but he's seated next to Cole. Two and two on Votto. You give him about another four miles an hour on his fastball. And he says he can throw a little slider. As long as he's throwing strikes, he can pitch. Actually kind of proved that last night without throwing an extra four miles an hour. Threw up a zero. Yeah. Well, here's Votto after falling behind 0 and 2. It's 3 and 2. And he's on again. Just unbelievable, this guy. Votto after a slow start to this season. Again, draws a walk last night on base five times. And Locke will face Todd Frazier. Was given the night off last night. Thank you very much. Didn't make much difference no. in the score, but I was glad that he wasn't in there, even though he's been scuffling a little of late. I mean, he just has wore us out this season. It's not just his batting average either. It's that Everything he does. Home runs and RBIs that are, are getting us. And there's no way he was going to miss tonight. 450 career average against Jeff Locke. See there, the lock gets him out more than half the time. Silver linings are in everything, Greg. You just got to look for them. And that ball gets away. It goes back to the backstop. And Cervelli able to hold Votto at second, not allow him to go to third on that wild pitch. Silver linings and everything. Normally guys don't go to third. It's the silver lining. All right. Didn't go to third. That's not that's like a ten lining. That's silver. Now we're judging it. Brass Our linings. Maybe. Brass lining. It's, a, it's not a very good silver lining. Two and two on Frazier. Tied for second with 27 homers. 67 RBIs tied for fourth in the league. Votto moves to second on the wild pitch after drawing the walk from Locke, who strikes out Frazier looking. One nothing Bucks after one.
working in a big league ball game is pretty much a dream come true for most position players, regardless of what they'll tell you. Jeff Decker obviously did it last night, and he did it in front of the biggest influence of his baseball career. His father, Kent, runs baseball camps in Arizona for a living and is off the whole months of June and July. So when Jeff was recalled before the first game out of the All-Star break, he decided he wasn't going to miss any of his son's games in the big leagues as long as he didn't have to work. So Kent traveled to Milwaukee, KC, Pittsburgh, and Minnesota before coming to Cincinnati. Hasn't missed a game since Jeff has been back up with the big club this season. Now he has to report back to work tomorrow, so he flew back today. Which means, Greg and Bob, the last inning he saw in person meant watching his son pitch in a Major League Baseball game for the first and most likely only time. What a story. Last inning he sees following his son to every ballpark, and he sees that. And the scoreless eighth inning. For Jeff Decker. I wonder what uh, Josh Harrison thought of Decker's form. We'll talk to Jay Hay next inning. Top of the third, we'll talk to Josh Harrison, who's currently on the disabled list. Two on Alvarez. He homered off the lefty David Holmberg in the second inning last night. Made the score 3 1. That's as close as the Pirates would get. Hamilton. One out. If you don't play that shallow, Kirk. Well, the Pirates and Coca-Cola have teamed up to share a Coke with fans. Select tickets purchased from now until Sunday. The Pirates will add $5 of loaded value onto your ticket. Good for the purchase of a Coca-Cola product at PNC Park. The offer valid for any of the three games against the Cubs starting Monday night. That series goes through Wednesday. Get your tickets now at Pirates.com slash Coca-Cola. Cubs picking up Dan Heron today for the Marlins. They'll be visiting Milwaukee tonight. Got underway in about a half an hour. The Cardinals host the Rockies. Cardinals came back. Beat Colorado last night. So they pick up another game. The Pirates start the day five and a half back of the Redbirds. Valley pops this ball up. Phillips or De Jesus? It is De Jesus, and two outs. Fly out to shallow right center and a pop up to the shortstop. Brandon Phillips and his double play partner De Jesus having some fun. Well, Phillips likes to have fun out there on the field, doesn't he? He is all about that. It's not Mr. Serious out there very often. Jeff Locke, three hits and 26 at bats. He had fun last night, Phillips did. Four for five with seven runs batted in. He became the first major league player to have four hits in a game, two homers. Two steals and seven RBIs. No other player had ever done that in Major League history. And two and two on lock. AJ Burnett. And you really have to wonder now as you look back on it. The start before the All Star break wasn't all that great. He didn't pitch at all in the All Star game when there appeared to be at least one or two opportunities for Bruce Bochy to, to put him in there. And then the Pirates decide not to start him initially after the break, all that rest. And uh, Clint Hurdle said we wanted to honor his time off. And now you start to wonder whether. That elbow wasn't barking 
earlier and Jeff Locke draws the two out walk. Well, certainly was something going on last night. It was odd of saying it, it. And what didn't make sense. Was that. He started off. Throwing in, you know. 86 87 mile an hour and ended up throwing 94. Oh, it would make sense if he had started off throwing 94 and ended right. up throwing 87 86. Then yeah. it was been old man. He's hurt. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But it was just really weird the way it worked last night. But he knew something was wrong. Cross your fingers that a couple of weeks off will take care of whatever the, the problem is because he's been a an innings eater. Almost uh, just about 200 innings every year. Since at least uh, 2007. Hey, even last year with the hernia. 214 innings last year. Pitched all season with a sports hernia, is that yeah, what they call it? Yeah. Uh, he doesn't go on the uh, DL easily. Polanco can't hold his swing. Second strikeout for Lorenzen after he walked his mound opponent. Pirates up 1 nothing. Ball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Trax and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. Our Day Automotive this day in Pirates history, July 31st, 1992. Tim Wakefield makes his Major League debut, beats the Cardinals. The knuckleballer gets the start. An injury to Zane Smith. He was scratched, and Wakefield went on to pitch a complete game. Struck out 10. Gave up two unearned runs. Barry Bonds had a two run homer. Jay Bell a solo shot. And in his debut, he beat the Cardinals on this day back in 1992. Wakefield went on to go 8 and 1 and 13 starts down the stretch. Remember the song? Talk about Wakefield. I oh, was not remember. around. This ball bounced off the tip of the glove of Aramis Ramirez, a diving attempt, and Marlon Bird has a leadoff single. I think that came out next spring training. The song. Bird had a three hit night, including a three run first inning homer. He leads off the second with a hit. The switch hitting catcher Brian Pena. That's his overall batting average from this right side of the plate. He hits 229. Kind of surprised that Bird didn't go anywhere, aren't you? Bird didn't get traded. Surprised by that? 
that Bird didn't. Yes, yeah. very. I mean, he's the. Uh, yes, very surprised. He fits that mold, obviously, that to move on this time of year and uh, give somebody a little extra offense, a little, little punch, especially an American League yeah. team that can, you know, you can uh, essentially play four outfielders. One of them you can DH. Yeah, I was I was surprised. One ball, one strike. On Pena. But now it's all about the non waiver. Yep. Not not just to think that nothing that uh, something won't happen. Yeah, something can still happen. Guys will still get traded. You know, but Bob Bird has one of those vesting options, and I wonder if you know if he. If that has anything to do with it, I think he makes like 15 million next year if he reaches a certain amount of at bats this season. Do you think that would preclude someone from picking him up? Yes, it would. Uh, I mean, I don't know how close he is to vesting, but I, I don't think. Uh, I'm nothing against you know Marlon Bird. I think he's a good player, but he's a, a little older. You don't know when uh, things are going to fall off drastically. And 15 million is a lot of money. I would say, yeah, that would that would probably uh, have a few teams shy away. That, that's a pretty big, big paycheck. One-two count on Pena, and a strikeout number two for Jeff Locke. And look at Pena keeping those arms up for Kerwin Danley to see. Maybe he got a little bit of a call there. Could have been a, an inch inside at most. That's no small thing for Locke to get those calls. That's important for yeah. him. I mean, that's one of his bread and butter pitches, that fastball on the inside corner to stand up, literally in that case, stand up the right handers. De Jesus, it's a drive to deep left field. Marte is back. Ivan De Jesus Jr. Gives the Reds a 2 1 lead in the second, his fourth home run. Got inside, but didn't get it up toward the hands. When the ball is inside but down, the right hand hitter then can drop the head of the bat to the baseball. When the ball is up on the hands, the only way to get the head of the bat there. Is to get it around real quick and probably pull it foul. But when the ball is down, just above the knees, as that one was, they'll be able to uh, get the head of the bat to it and easily keep it fair. Eighth allowed by Locke this season. His 20th start. And the Reds take the lead. And on to Jesus. Pitcher Lorenzen at the plate. De Jesus getting a good amount of playing time, of course, with Zach Cozart on the disabled list. He's been a utility player since being promoted in early June. That was when Marlon Bird first went on the disabled list. Now it's one ball and one strike on the pitcher. Lorenzen hitting 269. Two and two. Lock. Walked Joey Votto with two outs in the first inning, then struck out Todd Frazier looking. Gave up the hit to Bird to start this inning just off of Aramis Ramirez's glove, then struck out Pena. And De Jesus hits the home run. And now Lorenzen into left center field with a base hit. Michael Lorenzen's eighth hit of the season. I guess he will take over as take over from Leak. Mike Leak of this pitching staff. Now that Leak has been dealt, he and Leak were tied with seven hits on the year before this single. Leak has been dealt to the Giants. I bet you Leak is happy he stayed in the National yeah. League. 
can help himself with that bat. It uh, definitely uh, gives you an edge over the other pitcher if you you can hit, you can handle yourself at the plate. Billy Hamilton, two for five. Last night scored three runs, stole two bases. And he is six for 13 lifetime against Locke. Major League leader with 49 steals. Not too many guys in the league that when they're in the right hand hitters batters box. Will they strike all already on them? That the third baseman will be in on the grass. Still. But that's what Hamilton does to you. Man. Nobody runs like he does. That can even back up too far if he gets two strikes. Mm -hmm. Because he might hit a chopper. Yeah. Play last night uh, for Hamilton and the Pirates was his bunt single up the first baseline. That was in the fourth inning. Eventually, he would score after stealing second and third. Gave the Reds a 5 1 lead. Then he was part of the six run fifth inning. Hit the hard ground ball to Pedro Alvarez. Alvarez decided to try and throw to second with a runner at third base and a runner at first. Instead of looking that runner back to third and stepping on the bag. Instead he threw it into left center field and Pirates were well on their way to losing and walk to Hamilton. Second walk for Locke. You never want to walk Hamilton, that's for sure. But silver lining pitchers in front. Yeah, of that's right. That's a good one, Bob. It's a strong silver lining there. Fifth the pitcher is slowing things yeah, down. Absolutely. Plugging up the bases. Ray Series maybe going to go out. And so that is kind of one of the negatives of having Hamilton hit behind the pitcher. What do you think? Instead of eighth. Because well, the pitcher gets on now. How, how many times is the pitcher going to get on? Are you saying pitchers can't hit? Well, you know what? You're you're an American leaguer at heart, aren't you? I just realized that. You know better than that. Ray Searage out to settle down. Lock. Brandon Phillips at the plate. Two on. Just one out. Now a 39 RBIs on the year. Went completely around. He was uh, trying to hit another one of those home runs. Yeah. Swinging like that, he'll be in Houston. Line to the left. And they are loaded. Hit of the inning. 
That down and in pitch again. Down and in, in, in the strike zone, down and in, not, not the back foot. Here is Jason Bourgeois retired on a fine play by Neil Walker in the first. Just 32 at bats for Bourgeois. Much of this year on the disabled list, the pitcher Lorenzen singled. He is at third base with Hamilton at second and Phillips at first. Jeff Locke with the first major jam after giving up the two run homer to DeJesus. He's yet to retire a batter. Yeah, he'd love to get a double play here so you don't have to pitch to Votto with runners on base. You think he's got set up for a strikeout? I, I, I'd rather see him get a ground ball than a strikeout here. That's about to lead off next inning. Yeah, that's pretty bad with that. The, the Cervelli was tapping the ground, wanted the ball to bounce. He missed high. Chopper. Not a double play ball. And will they get one? Yes. Gone to Ramirez. They get Hamilton another run scores. It's 3 1. Uh, of all guys to get on that play, it's Hamilton. This is, it really is a heck of a play. And that's their only chance to get it out. Really on both players' parts. Yeah. You see, Ramirez wrong, went wrong. to his left initially. Yeah, and a presence of mind that you know, they had to get that tag down. Didn't have time to find the bag. First and second, two yeah, outs. Yeah, here's Votto. Everything Aramis does over at third base is just kind of like muscle memory. There's yeah. no thinking that goes on. He's played so many innings after inning out there. Double steal. Phillips is 14th of the year. Bourgeois first. You know, it's one of those double steals, Greg, that I, I'm surprised more teams don't do that. So when there's two outs, a lot of times the runner at second base is not really being paid attention to. Because it, in their minds, okay, there's two outs, he's not going to try and steal third, it's no big deal. But if he can, he always drags that other guy in the squaring position with it. Because the runner behind him is not being held on at first base. And uh, the Reds right there, they took advantage of that. Swinging and Votto fouls it back sharply. Three and one on Votto. Three and one. Loaded now for Frazier. Another one of those curve balls that came out early and stayed high. Not real good command of the curve ball so far. Or hit, hit or miss with it. Votto on base again. Now you might you know be thinking while he was pitching around Votto had to open base, but I don't think so with Frazier coming up. Even 
no, and Frazier's been no mini slump, but still, this is a dangerous spot. And now Cervelli can't find it, so Locke trots in. The ball settled just to the edge of the dirt circle. Phillips. Cervelli hurt. Ball came up and got Cervelli. Brandon Phillips at third. Not able to score as Cervelli kept it in front of him. One and one. This year, or in his career, rather, both of them this season. Shop toward Gong, and they'll toss to second. Two run homer for De Jesus, and then Lorenzen scored. Josh Harrison will be our guest. Lead things off, and as promised, we're joined by the uh, Pirates All Star third baseman Josh Harrison, who's on the disabled list. But Jay, hey, we, we love seeing you out there before ball games taking those ground balls. It seems like you're getting closer. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, just taking it day by day and uh, just trying to get, get, get my thumb feeling better every day and see what restrictions I can eliminate daily. You know, some days are, are rougher than others, but uh, I, I've been at a, a pretty good pace here the past week or so. So how's it feeling right now that thumb? Uh, right now it's, it's feeling OK. Um, I, I got my little trusty. It's oh. called an exerciser. It's hand strengthening. So they want you to keep pressing that whenever you can. Uh, I'm just squeezing okay. it. You know anything to help get the strength back. It's like a small avocado. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me it's not an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh, is there any one thing that in your mind yet that you can think of OK when I can do that then I'll be ready. Uh, hitting, swinging a bat, catching a line drive, or I mean, a anything that you you can uh, you can say, okay, that that's going to be the big test. Big test would probably be um, seeing live pitching, and uh, you know, ground balls. I, I'm not, I wouldn't necessarily be worried about that. It would probably be, you know, a hook and line drive, something that catches in the palm, or yeah. uh, even a tag play. You know, somebody sliding in the third, and me putting down the tag. That's probably. 
that and Hibner are probably going to be the, the two biggest not issues but the, the two things that I'll have the most restrictions on. Will it be tough for you to not wow. have it on your, on your wow. mind? What do you think of that Jay Hay? Yeah, yeah go ahead Jay Hay. What do you think of that there? I don't think too highly of it I tell you that. But you got a good look at the uh, yeah, his, his, body, his body was, was aggressive but his bat did not go anywhere. That's a first base umpire Rob Drake. Yeah, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. So anyway I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I forgot so what the, I asked. Well, you're, what, what you, know, the, you interrupted both of us. Yeah, so I do it. Yeah. I do it all the time, Jerry. You, you asked me what what I thought would be my biggest challenges, and I said probably you know a hook and line drive, seeing live pitching, and oh, I, um, making the tag play. I, I, I know what it was before Greg interrupted us. It was this: Do you think you can go out there without thinking about this in your mind, playing it, and, and having no thoughts about your thumb hurting? Um. When, when that time comes, I believe so. I'll uh, I'll have enough adrenaline to, to go out there. You know, I think I'll be so excited to be back on the field and and battling with my boys that the last thing on my mind is going to be any Good type time, of man. thing I'm feeling in my Good. thumb. You ready? Bob? Go ahead, Greg. Thank next. you. Hey, Jay. Hey, <laughs> uh, do you think that you're ahead of schedule still, though? Would you um, say? I mean, I do. I, I don't really necessarily know what the exact schedule is, but. Uh, I, I, when know, you went I down. I, they said seven weeks, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, it could take seven weeks. It could take less. I, I know I'm, I'm going to do my part to make it back in less than that. You know, I, I've been feeling better every day, but uh, still also want to be smart about it and uh, make sure when I come back that I'm not doing anything to hinder myself or the team. And, and just, I, I understand I'm going to be, I'm going to play with some soreness. I mean, this injury is something that. I'm going to play with soreness, but I'm fine playing sore. I don't want to play with pain. That was the reason to get the surgery. Hey, did uh, you give uh, Jeff Decker any tips last night? <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but I, I told him, uh, I was like, man, just I knew he, he had pitched before in high school, so he might have had a little more experience. But it, it made me reminisce on when I did it, and uh, I, I was happy for him out there. You know, you <laughs> never want to see that. You know, our, our pitchers get hit like they do. But uh, over a course of 162 games, it's bound to happen one time. And, uh, you know, it's pretty exciting when a guy can get out of it without giving up any runs. Oh, foul ball. Foul potato. Hey, uh, everybody, I think, wants to kind of check that off the list, all the players that get out there and pitch. Now that you've done it, would you ever want to do it again? Um, I mean, you had there, fun. There, there's a yes and a no. Uh, Means we're going to lose the game. I, I, yeah, but <laughs> also um, I only got to face one hitter. I mean, I got the job done, but, yeah. <laughs> you know, some guys get to pitch a whole inning. I only got to pitch the one batter. So you're a little jealous then, I think, of Dr. But No, because uh, there's still some <laughs> people that, that haven't got a chance to pitch. So uh, I, I'm content with my one. You know, we call that up here, Josh. We call it the silver lining. <laughs> Brandon Phillips and Jay Hay, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you back on the field soon. All right. Thanks, John. Jay Hay, our guest. The Pirates go down in order. 3 1, Cincy.
Buckos are wearing more pitches than any other team this season. Mark Melanson encourages young athletes to lead a healthy and active lifestyle and much more inside Pirates Baseball. Presented by Allegheny Health Network tomorrow after post game on Route Sports. And a 3 1 Cincinnati lead. Marlon Bird went off with a hit last inning, was aboard when DeJesus homered. Pena to Jesus against Locke. Shout out to Zach and Steph Scringer and the Seviller family. Watching tonight. Mark Niskash from the Pirates front office is here with his wife and son Parker. It was fun having Jay down there, get, hearing his reaction yeah. live as things were happening on the field the, the check swing, the, the long foul ball. And that shows you the players well, react like. Yeah, that's exactly like what they're doing. They're reacting in. Similar ways down in that in that mm -hmm. dugout. Every time a ball is hit hard, you, you have guys will jump up and you know immediately somebody will say, "Did he get it?" You know, yeah. something like that. It's just, it's it's human nature. Yeah, I mean, you're you're wanting to win, you're rooting, and everything that happens down there, you're into. He's got such a great attitude. Yeah, he about does everything. He's, uh, yeah, he's a great guy to have on the team. Yeah. Lucky to have. Not feeling sorry for himself. And Bird goes down on strikes. Third punch out for Locke. There's where he wants that fastball. Up. Big difference between right there in that corner and down in that bottom corner. You can't catch up to the ball when it's up there on your hands. Young waits on that last hop and guns on the first. Two up and two down. We want to see your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag hit data strong fan and you might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. So get your strongest fan photo in. Again, brought to you by T Mobile. Paco fans here in Cincy. Don De Jesus homered with Bird aboard last inning to give the Reds a 2 1 lead. They added another, and they're up 3 1 in the third. Look at that little short hop play by Ramos Ramirez. As you said, Bob, that's all muscle memory. Yeah, He's I done mean, that yeah. a thousand times. Natural reaction. Yeah.
plays of the week. A look back at the series against the Nationals at PNC Park. Irish took three of four, then won the two games, the sweep in Minneapolis, and lost last night to these Reds. Trying to come from behind against Michael Lorenzen. Zhang Ho Gong doubled home Polanco in the first. Pirates got a bad break in that the ball bounced over the wall. Otherwise, it would have been a two run double. Point Park University tweet. Is Lorenzen wearing Cueto's glove as a tribute? Or is that his normal glove? Did you say Cueto on it? There it is. Cueto. Tribute to Johnny Cueto, who's now with the Royals. Cueto, by the way, is making his uh, Royals debut and gave up two runs. Doesn't know how to tie a knot, apparently. All oh, the strings just hanging loose. And toward the right center field gap for Jung Ho Gung. He's going to have himself another double. Doubled over the head of the center fielder Hamilton in the first and doubles into the right center gap to lead off the fourth. Look at the, where the pitch is. I mean, that's just absolutely perfect job of hitting. Going with the ball, going with the pitch, with authority. Nobody out. See if Walker can pull the ball and uh, at least move him to third. If Walker doesn't uh, knock him, in, knock him home himself. That's uh, what he's thinking of right now. Okay, get out there, got to hook something. If I make it out, at least it's positive. Out. And toward left. That won't move the runner. Walker flies out to the left fielder. Bourgeois. Young forced to stay at second. Lorenzen, 6'3, 203 pounds, an Anaheim, California native. Was selected in the competitive lottery round, first lottery round two years ago, 38th overall choice. Out of play. I wonder if Alvarez feels a little bit more relaxed. I didn't get a chance to ask him today if he feels a little bit more relaxed. Because I think some players that he to hear he's heard his name, I'm sure, the rumor mills, and uh, now the deadline has passed. I imagine that can relax some players. Bouncing ball into right field. Young is going to be waved home. The throw by Bird is about four hops to the plate. Nicely done by Rick Sofield to certainly be aware of that. Gong scores to make it three to two on the RBI single by Alvarez. Federal action. RBIs. Okay, Greg, the reason I kind of didn't say my, I, I'm not sure that. I buy into that where players get up tight because their name is, you know, we, we used to hear that about Jack Wilson all the time, you know, and I just don't, in my experience, I never saw that. Hmm. You know, I, uh, last night talking about the same subject, I used the, the word uh, curious, that you don't know what's going to happen. You're curious as to what's going to happen. If you're on a losing team, you're curious if you might go or who, what one of your teammates is going to go. If you're on a winning team, you're curious about who's going to 
who's going to join you. Yeah. You know what, what changes will be made in that regard. But I mean it's it's a professional baseball team. It, it, you don't really get stressed out about stuff you you know here here on social media or something. Well, I guess what really brought it home to me Bob was the other night when Wilmer Flores thought he was traded the shortstop of the Mets and actually went on the field and literally was crying had tears down his cheeks and I think maybe some guys uh, well, depending I, on one you know you don't believe how, how many other times have you ever seen that no, I hadn't I have to believe that's a very rare yeah occurrence. absolutely yeah, so I don't think that that's so you don't I, think it, no yeah. I, I don't think that that, that I mean everything is not 100 percent etched in stone. I'm sure that you can find the rare individual that is going to get upset over seeing a, a rumor. Now, in this case, it was not a rumor. He was told he was traded. You know what I mean? It was. It wasn't like there was a rumor. Right. So, but if you, get, I, I've never seen anybody that said, "Oh, I might get traded." Uh, there's a rumor that uh, there's talk that I'm going here or there. Nobody really. I mean, that doesn't affect the way you play. I mean, Johnny Cueto had somebody warming up right next to him the other night and then went out through eight shutout innings and then did get traded. Didn't affect him. Right? Right. So your opinion, obviously, is that these guys are not affected by it. I think that the vast majority right, right. of them, yeah. There is the, the rare individual that, for whatever reason, might let something like that get to him. But you shouldn't. What do you think about it's general? Part of the game. What do you think about general managers who worry about, therefore, players' names being involved in the rumor mill because they're afraid that it affects how they play? You think that's not? Well, obviously, I disagree with yeah. that. I mean, because I, I hear I that mean, everybody can have their. This is my opinion. Right. Everybody has their own opinion, and mine doesn't necessarily have to be right. I just I've heard a lot of general managers say it's one of the reasons they can't stand or dislike this type of at this time of year because so many names come out there and they're worried about. How the players react to their names being brought out in the rumor mill. 3 2 Reds. Well, a couple of moments ago, Greg and Bob were talking about trades and how players react to them. Kind of a unique trade took place on the red side that did involve Johnny Cueto. It wasn't Johnny Cueto, of course, going to the Kansas City Royals, but it was Johnny Cueto who traded gloves with Michael Lorenzen. But what you might not realize, those cleats, they're not his either. Those are Aroldis Chapman's cleats that Michael Lorenzen is wearing. Now, they didn't have to pull off a trade to get him. Chapman just gave him a pair of those cleats, and he joked after he wore them during a game that he was hoping it would add a couple miles to his fastball. Unfortunately, it did not. But, yeah, Michael Lorenzen on the mound wearing Johnny Cueto's glove and Aroldis Chapman's cleats, Greg and Bob. By the way, Chapman, Robbie, kind of a surprise that he stays. It seemed like a foregone conclusion that they would deal him. 
Well, Lorenzen leads off. He singled in the second. And towards center field. And McCutcheon will make a sliding catch on the Lorenzen line drive. A very nice play coming in. It looked like he might have bobbled that for a moment. He got it clean. I haven't seen McCutcheon do a lot of that this year. The feet first line up down to the knee. It had become almost a patented catch of his. You wonder maybe if uh, this season you know, those knees weren't barking a little bit. Billy Hamilton walked in the second. Nicely done by one time gold glove center fielder Andrew McCutcheon. Hamilton Pirates trying to find a way to get this pesty player out. This is the 11th game of the year. The Pirates have played against the Reds, and Hamilton has scored a dozen runs. Well, there you go. A strikeout. Two up and two down. Four Ks for Locke. To the top of the order. Star Wars night is coming to PNC Park August 19th. Pirates will play the Diamondbacks at 7:05. Star Wars theme night featuring special pregame costume contest. Plus, fans who order tickets online will receive the official Pirate Star Wars T-shirt. For tickets, go to pirates.com/star wars. August 19th. I hope I'm on TV that night. I gotta check it out. Check what out if you're on TV Wednesday that night. What do you mean? See if I'm on TV that night. Why do you hope you're on TV that night? Well, I have to come up with a good outfit, huh? Only you? I've already got the mask. What Remember? night did you say that was? August 19th. 19th. I'm on with Steve. Show with Steve. I'll, I'll let you borrow one of my masks. I'm on radio. Didn't matter. Well, no. Remember that one year I was wearing those masks? Yeah, yeah. And they'd show us on TV on the, in the radio booth. Well, I'll let you borrow one of my masks. Oh, you mean for the uh, radio? Yeah. You guys will show me? Well, if you're wearing a mask. Do I have to wear it the whole game? I, I, you'd have to ask Adam or Pete that. I'm not a producer or a director. Popped up. Alvarez with some room and a one, two, three, bottom of the fourth inning for Jeff Locke and two straight one, two, three frames. Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go, Bucks. 
UPMC scoreboard 3 2 Reds. Gregory Blanco will lead things off. Yes, sir. Blanco has reached on the infield single and struck out. Safely now in 20 of his last 21 ball games. Wasn't happy with himself when he struck out in the second, couldn't hold up on a pitch well out of the zone. So Blanco going to show some more patience here against the rookie Lorenzen. In the hole is Andrew McCutcheon, with Marte on deck. Marte wasn't thrilled with Rob Drake, the first base umpire, on an appeal. Strikeout victim in the third. Four Ks for Lorenzen. Coming off a really rough outing against the Colorado Rockies at Coors Field on Sunday. Gave up eight runs in two and a third innings on seven hits. Making his 17th major league appearance tonight and his 15th career start. Strikes out Polanco again as Polanco chases. Yeah, normally, I, th I think Polanco is pretty good at those pitches that are upstairs. And this one's thrown right by him, what I consider to be one of his strong areas. Likes the ball up. That's the one he drives to left center. Ball up on the outside half of the plate. Here's Marte. And he chases pitch downstairs and he strikes out for the second straight time. That's three consecutive strikeouts for Lorenzen, six on the night. The next university night. Is for Penn State fans this Wednesday when the Pirates host the Cubs at 705 by purchasing tickets online. You can join fellow fans and alumni, your Nittany Lions, for a night at PNC Park, and you'll receive a Pirates cap in Penn State colors. Tickets start at just $19 to receive your hat. Purchase tickets at pirates.com slash Penn State. Renzen with six strikeouts. He's gotten McCutcheon. It's this well to right field the other way back and clear the deck cannonball coming to tie the game. Oh, he just flipped out one, did he? Andrew McCutcheon who homered on Wednesday at target field. Homer's the opposite way to tie it here in the fifth, his 15th of the season. I don't think this ball was a strike. Looked like it was off the plate a little bit. He just not a real big swing. 
is showing off that bat speed that he can generate even on a ball that's a, that he's you know, just kind of looks like he's trying to hit a line drive the other way is what he's trying to do here. Look at that. Got out pretty easy too. Yeah. Even all Plenty of close. distance. Well, tied at three on the McCutcheon home run. Goes out of the zone. The Allegheny Health Network Super Mo and hits his 15th home run of the season. Several rows back. Traveled some 363 feet. Now with 66 runs batted in, he's in the top 10 in the RBI department. Loves hitting here, doesn't he? Loves yeah. hitting home runs in this park. Loves in general facing Cincinnati pitching. Yeah, yeah. McCutcheon hitting about 340 this year against the Reds. Stays two and two on Aramis Ramirez, who has fly to left and bounced to second. Aramis Ramirez with 37 career home runs against the Reds. Only three third basemen in Major League history have hit more homers against the Reds than Ramirez. And a little flare that was caught by Brandon Phillips. Nobody caught the ball that. Andrew McCutcheon hit moments ago. Well, yeah, fan did. A few rows deep. Andrew McCutcheon goes oppo to tie it at three. Stars on a special inside Pirates baseball. Head to Cincinnati with Garrett Cole, A.J. Burnett, Andrew McCutcheon, and Mark Melanson as they take part in this year's Midsummer Classic on Inside Pirates Baseball, Kings of Queen City tonight after postgame on Route Sports. Andrew McCutcheon, home run here. Midsummer Classic here moments ago to tie it. Now Jason Bourgeois. See if Jeff Locke. And continue this little roll that he is on, retiring seven straight. Oh, 
home run for McCutcheon. His 15th tying this ball game. And a fine catch. On the line drive that uh, Lorenzen hit in the fourth inning. He kind of likes that little scenario. He makes a fine defensive catch. The next half inning hits a home run. Did the same thing in Minneapolis the other day. Two and two now on Bourgeois. Home plate umpire Kerwin Danley was right calling that ball two. And there's a line drive base hit. Bourgeois is aboard. Lead off single. Tonight's Barrel Automotive League leader stat, the Major League Baseball leaders in whiff percentage on changeups this season. Uh, Francisco Liriano and Jeff Locke are in the top 10. Carlos Martinez, the top National League pitcher, then Liriano and Locke. Whiff percentage on changeups. Not surprising to see left-handed pitchers on that list. It, that's kind of what they do. They, they stand up the right-handers with the fastball, and then they change up down the way for the swing and a miss. And a lot of lefties over the years. That, that's uh, been their mo. One strike on Joey Votto. He's walked twice. And has now reached base safely in seven of his first eight plate appearances of this series. That's a nice breaking ball. Out of nodding his head, yeah, that was a good one. Good sharp break to it, perfect location. Got it on the outside half of the plate. Throw it when it was even in the count. Two after throwing over to first base, Bourgeois returned. Two and two. This really is a master at work here, Joey Votto. Well, it's a tough at bat when he's up there. Oh. <laughs> it is it one of those guys when he gets in there? Okay, the battle is on. Again, at three and two. Todd Frazier on deck. It's Locke versus Votto. The runner at first, and nobody out in a tie game in the fifth. Now drive to right. Votto back. Uh, Polanco is back to make a fine catch, and it's going to be an easy double play. Jason Bourgeois, for some reason, is all the way to third base. He just made it. How about when he finally saw the ball coming in? He stopped it and ran back to third. He still can't believe that was caught. So, two outs. So, what a double play as uh, Polanco went back to make a sensational catch when the ball left the bat. Looked as though it wasn't even going to stay in the yard. 
It was so funny to, to watch My Bourgeois word. after he came around third. He sees the ball coming in, and he still doesn't realize what has happened. Like right now, he's running. He doesn't know that. He thinks the ball's down the corner for extra bases. He sees the ball, stops, and goes back to third, not knowing he's out. He was absolutely sure there was no way Man. that ball could be caught. Great catch by Polanco. Double play. A racist bourgeois. It didn't look like a double play ball off the bat. No. It looked, <laughs> it looked like a two run homer off the bat. Yeah, really. Here it is. Chick fil A double play. <laughs> really, it don't, no matter. How sure you are that ball is not going to get caught? You can't just take off running like that because you might be wrong. And it, I mean, if anything, you think that ball was going to be a home run, and maybe you're just kind of you're going to run, yeah, you're, second. and you're going to watch yeah. if it's out of here. Or not. <laughs> I don't know no, what he, he thought it was extra bases down the corner. I guess. Oh, wow! What a what a turn of events for the Pirates and Jeff Locke there. The leadoff hit by Bourgeois gets a three and two on Votto, double play, and then strikes out Frazier. Sixth inning in St. Louis. Matt Carpenter hit another homer. He hit two last night. Cardinals lead 2 nothing. Jason Bourgeois still thinking back to that base running blunder. Jeff Locke benefits from Bourgeois' decision. And Polanco's good play. Jung Ho Gung has two doubles. First one was over the head of the center fielder Billy Hamilton in the first inning. It brought home the first run of the game. Let off the fourth inning with a double to right center. And he scored on a Pedro Alvarez single. Jung Ho Gung, as he continues his strong play since playing every day, continues to. Uh, Climb the statistics in terms of rookie play this year. Among rookies in the National League, he came in third in batting. Behind Matt Duffy of the Giants, Yasmani Tomas of the Diamondbacks. He's in the top 10 in homers, RBIs. He leads an on base percentage. Hits this one well the other way. Over his bird. And this is off the wall. And Jung Ho Gung is going to have his third straight double. 
One over the center fielder's head. One into the right center gap. This one off the right field fence. He's building a nice spray chart too. You notice that? Yeah. It's like a fan. <laughs> All fields. Well, the last two, they tried to pitch him away, and he's burned them badly. I, I would have guessed that they got to try and pitch him inside next time. A three double game, 17 for the season. You know, Walker again not able to move Gong. This is the second time that uh, Walker, right after the double, flies out to left. Uh, frustrated Pirate second baseman, no doubt. Follow the Pirates wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Yeah, Neil did look frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Could see it and hear it. Yeah. Pounding that batting helmet back into the rack. Alvarez looks to pick him up as he did in the fourth. Next time we'll see him at the plate, I think there'll be a few scratches on that helmet. I didn't. didn't Pedro right after the flood. Then he foul one down in the same seats. Okay. Yeah, the other way. Yogi Berra inning. Deja vu over yeah. all over again. Picked up his 51st RBI in the fourth. Alvarez thought that was a good pitch. It was a good pitch. He missed it. Didn't quite get out there in time. Pops this one up and might Nobody get out of play. Stands. Stays one and two. Now, you know something crazy is going to happen tonight in this ball game. It's blue moon night. Yeah. Already been some strange plays. Alvarez thought he was out. No, nope, that was in the stands. And now Pena out to talk with Lorenzen. I'll tell you what, though, it was good to see Pedro put the bat down and start moving toward first. We've seen a few times where uh, guys kind of. I'm not going to name names now, but somebody actually walked back to the dugout last night when there was almost a fair ball on a pop fly. Now that was just another weird thing about that game. Two and two the count. And now Erwin Danley checking out. Ryan Pena is uh, something in his eye. Still a two two count on Alvarez with the runner at second and one away. Jung Ho Gong. Alvarez looks to get him home and get the Pirates the lead again. They had it briefly in the first inning. Reaches out for that one, bounces it to the shortstop to Jesus. Two outs now. We'll see if they even pitch to Cervelli. Well, Travis Ishikawa comes out on deck, maybe as a decoy. Jeff Locke has gone five. Still just 87 pitches. Jared Hughes is up. 
They're going to go ahead and play this card. Call the bluff. And we'll, we'll see, see if, if Clint Hurdle. was bluffing. Yeah. And to me, it doesn't look like he's bluffing. And there's the. That's all you need to know. Yep. The hug from the pitching coach, and then Clint Hurdle will go over and shake his hand. The lock goes five. Gives up five hits. And we'll see if the Pirates can get him a run. See Shikawa comes to the plate following the intentional walk. And out comes Jeff Pico, the pitching coach, for a scouting report. Automatic. Pain is still can't get something out of his eye there. <laughs> had Fraser look at it. <laughs> and then Fraser, did you see that? He nodded his head like yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's still there. I see it. Pico saying, you, you can see okay. <laughs> Ah, do you, just, 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 no, I can't see. Just him, just, yeah. Oh, that was that's, that's awesome. I think, you know, that's. Well, you think he was doing it on purpose, just like keep the moment loose. Ask like three different guys if his eye was okay. I saw Jumbo Diaz in the bullpen for Cincinnati. Lorenzen yeah. approaching the 100 pitch mark. It's a blue moon. I wonder if it'll really be blue tonight. It's going to come up right over the pilot house. Is it really? Yeah. The next one is not till 2018, I think. So make sure you give really? a look at it. What is a blue moon exactly, Bob? What does that mean? It's a blue moon. Just just because it's going to be here in a couple of years. What is it though? What does it mean? Well, I'm trying to think something up, but I'm just going to go with the normal answer. It it's uh, when you get a full two full moons in the same month. So the second the second full moon is the blue one. Yeah. But why do they call it blue though? Well, they had to come up with some name. Blue. And, uh, well, occasionally in some uh, well, like watch, a, watch Bob if you've, now. No, if you've had a, like a, a cataclysmic volca <laughs> yeah. volcanic eruption. Yeah. Uh -huh. Of course. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Like, when, like when Krakatoa blew. Right. Up. Of course. There would be stuff in the atmosphere, yes. and it can make it look blue. Oh, well, that, there's the explanation. And that, by the way, was off the cuff. He didn't prepare for that. One and two on Ishikawa. That's why when you hear once in a blue moon, it means something that only happens very rarely. Mm -hmm. but tonight, this is a once in a blue moon evening. I think the last one was. Uh, it was 20, 2012, actually. 2012, is what it was, yeah. yeah. June of 2012. August. No, it's June. August. First and third as Ishikawa continues to try and. Get that run in, Zhang Ho Gong. Somebody must have made a sensational catch. I've never seen a reaction like that. Well, it was on a rebound too. It was a line, line drive off the facing, and it came back. I mean, and he got the carry. It was like Lorenzen had to wait. Yeah, it was almost two like and a two. Way to call Just, time for yeah, the uh, curtain call. Yeah. Two and two, the count. You only see a catch like that uh, once in a blow moon. Nice block, but that will allow and a nice job by Cervelli. Throws, but then realizing that Pena wasn't going to find it immediately, took off for second. And Chicago gave him a little sign there. Said his hand, like, yeah, go ahead. Not going to catch him. Now 
final base hit can give the Pirates a two run lead. Full count Polanco on deck might be the last batter Lorenzen faces regardless. So a big pitch here for him. And he walks the pinch hitter. After the intentional walk to Cervelli. It's going to be it too. Ryan Price that. will make the change. 106 pitches. Only once all year is he thrown 107. That's his uh, high. That was the first game he threw of the year. Pirates have them loaded with two outs. And Gregory Polanco will face Jumbo Diaz. Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. It is a 3-3 game. Bases are loaded. Top of the sixth. Where it would pride right down the concourse. I like it. Right through all those red sheet, red shirts. Point Park University tweet from uh, Malkin Crazy. Bob Walk, the <laughs> science jock. I, I obviously I can't see. I got to look forward to read the uh, monitor. Bob Walk, the science, science jock. jock. Very good. I like that. Like Bill Nye, the science guy. <laughs> Bob Walk, the science jock. The, uh, I like that. So we'll, we'll oh, now on the, the okay. Chiron, when we're, in, we're doing the open, that'll be I'm under have your to name. come up with some kind of a science fact of the day. Yes. Uh, Jumbo's numbers on the year. ERA is uh, not I said Chiron. It's a duet right. now, by the way. Sorry. The duet, as you as you know, the science jock. It's a duet now. Greg, when you're talking to the truck, press that white button. I did. White I, button right I, I did. That was intentional. Oh, okay. I wanted to I wanted the audience to hear. It's a duet. What, what, what goes on? It's a duet. Yeah. Come on, it's not a Chiron anymore. Base is loaded. One ball, one call. One ball, one strike. You're talking to the truck about the tape machine, which is not really. There's no tape anymore either. But. Base is loaded. Gregory Polanco in a 3-3 ball game here in the sixth inning. Polanco. Infield hit a stolen base in the first and has struck out twice since. And the ball gets away. Here comes the runner for the plate, and he will score. Jung Ho Gong scores the go ahead run on a close play at the plate. And a wild pitch. The Pirates lead 4 3. Well, Jung Ho is doing it all tonight. There it is. That's a great break. Ball went 
in the dirt. He saw how high it bounced and took off. Now, I would rather see him slide with his foot to the plate than go with his hand. That he would have been safe, easy. It wouldn't have been that close. Going with the hand kind of actually made that play a little close. Now a 3 1 count on Polanco. Pena not able to keep the pitch in front of him. And then he it, it couldn't pick it up right away, too. If he would have been able to pick it up, that would have uh, maybe gave him an opportunity. Strike called. Polanco didn't think so. Was outside and yeah. low. He was getting ready to throw the bat away and take his base. Last night it was Joe West behind the plate, crew chief. Now at third, and tonight Kerwin Danley behind the dish. Still three and two on Polanco. Cervelli and Ishikawa the runners. And there's ball four. And they're loaded for Starling Marte. Jumbo Diaz was brought back to the big leagues after the All Star break. He was on. The Reds roster at the start of the season. In fact, he picked up his first big league win on opening day against these Buckos. But in 25 relief outings, had an ERA of over six and a half, so he was demoted to Triple A Louisville. He did a nice job down there in 13 outings, had a 113 ERA. Back in the big leagues, but a wild pitch and a walk. And Jeff Locke, a chance for the W, but. A ways to go and a base hit for Marte. Cervelli scores. Ishikawa is waved home and he will be out by a long shot. As the throw from Bourgeois was right on the money. Give Marte the RBI single. And the Pirates take the 5-3 lead and Jumbo Diaz giving up the run. Brian Pena hobbles to the dugout. Jung Ho Gong leading the way. His third double. He has scored two. He's driven in a run. Scored on the wild pitch. Now Marte, the base hit, will score Cervelli. And the left fielder Jason Bourgeois then will throw a strike to Brian Pena. Absolutely a beautiful throw coming home with two outs. You got to go and uh, enforce that excellent throw. And you can see Pena get right out there in front of home plate. The question is. The condition of Brian Pena, but you'll see 
Ishikawa go right for that left leg and Pena. He was limping off. Hobbled to the dugout. But he, he I mean, he just went right, right for the plate. Yeah. And you could see the knee kind of turn in, a, in an odd way, Pena's knee. Marlon Bird against Jared Hughes. And this is a, now the the new look Pirates bullpen. Brian Pena going to be okay. Yeah, fine. And no, no limp there. Jared Hughes will face Marlon Bird. Joaquim Soria is in the bullpen. The ball hit well to center. And McCutcheon just going to watch it leave the yard. Marlon Bird has homered in back to back games. Now has 18 on the year. And it's 5 to 4. It is Bird's fifth home run this season against the Pirates. And not a horrible pitch. Just a little bit above the knees. And this is, you know, what Jared is trying to do throw that sinker down about knee high, let it work, try to get a ground ball. Problem was, Bird didn't try to hook it. If he goes out and tries to hook it, he probably does hit a ground ball, but you can see that ball just a little bit right of dead center field. Sometimes the hitter just does a good job and beat you. I think that would be the case. Ball hit toward the right center field gap. And this is going to short hop the wall. And the second base goes Pena with a double. He was having a hard time running. As he was going toward first base, it, it looked like he was going to maybe have a blowout. That was a bad pitch. That was up. Watch it. See right there. See him starting to limp. That's when I thought maybe he might stop at first, but decided he would go ahead and leg it out. And made it. He's staying out there. Well, too. you got to give him credit. <laughs> he's hurting, but he's staying out there. He's just not going to look down. Like, man, how's that leg going to feel? Uh, catchers. Tough guys. They wouldn't be catchers if they weren't. Here's Yvonne De Jesus. He homered his first time up. They try to keep the ball in on him. He's going to be trying to move that ball the other direction. He wants to uh, get Pena to third. Kept that ball in. I really wonder the 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 new look Pirates bullpen. Clint Hurdle had the luxury, really, of pulling Locke after five innings. Before the addition of Soria, he might have had Locke go out for that sixth. And the tapper not going to be an easy play, but the out is recorded in a heck of a play by Pedro Alvarez and a horrendous base running by Peña at second base and is Alvarez okay that wrist as the glove hit the runner uh, Alvarez is in some pain here and Clint Hurdle and Todd Soms are going to come out and just check yeah, what was Peña doing Peña was standing at second that's amazing you, you get a, a, a perfect swinging yeah. bunt you know, down to the third base side, and you just stand at second. You see, the uh, every first baseman's nightmare having to catch that ball into the runner and have the runner hit your wrist as he's going by. That's a nice job by Alvarez. You see, guys, uh, they get the wrist jam. You can tear ligaments in the thumb. Look at that! He just stood there the whole time. He could have at least came down halfway and why and then waited for the throw to first and then went the rest of the way. Joe Blanton part of that new Pirates bullpen. Skip Schumacher is the pinch hitter. At the plate. Against Hughes.
By the way, the mode is looking a little on the orange side. Not even bluish orange. Hmm. Gets up a little higher, a little, a little blue. I bet. See what I mean? It's kind of orange looking, isn't it? Yeah, I see what you mean. That's definitely not blue. Popped up on the infield. Two outs. Schumacher pops up to Young. Pena still at second. Ran that ball in on him. Boy, now's where it really becomes a big deal. But Pena not able to get the third base. Yeah. Well, it's a big deal when they were the one out, but with with Hamilton out, he gets so many leg hits that uh, that's a kind of an issue not being at third, even with all those two outs. Well, Picked there by the Pirates catcher, the Reds catcher, Pena. So maybe he was. Upset at himself. Roller on the right side. Walker on to first. Jared Hughes gives up the home run to Bird, but strands the runner. And the Pirates lead by one. On a Friday night in Cincinnati, the Pirates lead the Reds on the UPMC scoreboard five to four, going to the seventh inning. Jared Hughes talking to Pedro Alvarez, asking, "Is all right? Yep, I'm fine." And uh, nicely done on that throw, as the uh, the ball and the runner arriving at the same time. J.J. Hoover takes over the seventh inning. Hoover seen a lot of action this year. Game number 46. But pretty good too. Look at the opponent average 184. Elizabeth Forward High School 
product. Strike on McCutcheon. Homered off of the starter Lorenzen in the fifth that tied the game. Looking for more runs with that rally cap. Bucko yeah, we, fan. We don't really need that right now. There must be some form of uh, like a more runs hat you could have. I don't know. I think you should run down Instead to tell them. Actually, rally hat. What would you do? Uh, run yourself? down there and tell them. Well, no, I couldn't leave you by yourself. No, please don't. Gotcha. <laughs> Goes down on strikes for the second time tonight. Joaquin Soria is up. So Clint Hurdle has said he will kind of mix and match in terms of when he decides to bring in Soria or Watson. And it looks like he's chosen the seventh inning for Soria, looking at who is due up. It's the first three batters in the order. Brandon Phillips, Jason Bourgeois, and Joey Votto. Ramirez, good career numbers against Hoover. Short sample size. But Hoover out in front, 0 and 2. To third, Frazier on the Votto. Two outs for Hoover in the seventh. Time now for our data strong fan photo of the game, brought to you by T Mobile. Jung Ho Gung fans. Yeah, they got to be happy tonight. Looks like that might have been in Minnesota. Target field. So I guess he's going to put this one in the left field corner. Maybe. Well, that would have been a good one to do. Mm -hmm. too. <laughs> a hanging breaking ball. He's hit both gaps. Right field corner. I guess the first one though really wasn't a gap. That was pretty much dead center. Yeah, but then right. the right center and then the right field. Right so over Hamilton's head. Average and even 300 now. And a fly ball to Bird. And the Bucks for the second time tonight go down in order. Looks like Joaquin Soria going to make his Pirates debut.
Beach Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Just ask a neighbor. And by LeViz, the official furniture and mattress supplier of the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop LeViz. Let's go Bucks! Here he is. Joaquin Soria. The closer for the Tigers traded yesterday to Pittsburgh and arriving this afternoon. Soria will face the top of the order, Brandon Phillips. Trying to see those 23 saves that uh, he has this year. Just likely he'll end up with 23. Soria, 6'3, 200 pounds, Mexican native, 31 years old. Hashtag Bucks Booth and the tweets to welcome the new pirate. Soria, one time closer in Kansas City. Forty plus saves, 2008 2010 with the Royals. Came to the big leagues with Kansas City in 2007. Twice underwent Tommy John surgery. Back in 2003 and again missed uh, much of the 2012 season. Whoa, that got a Kerwin Danley. The home plate umpire. Just missed it. I think. What, what happened there? He's all right. Uh, one of the trainers for the Reds coming out. Left shoulder pointing to it. I mean, hit him. It didn't hit him very hard. The ball just immediately got to the backstop. Just brushed his shirt. Bouncing ball to the right side. And Hakeem Soria's first Pirates batter, he retires to begin the seventh inning. Soria going to get that ball out of, out of play. Soria will face uh, Jason Bourgeois, but talking to Soria briefly before the game about how excited he is to be here, and even though he was the closer in Detroit and has that closing experience, he said, what do you think of being here in Pittsburgh? He said, I'm excited. Let's do it, he said. Trying to make it a, a shorter ball game, much like Kansas City. It was like a last year and even this year. Once you're... Uh, once you're down six innings to the Royals, it's pretty much lights out. I mean, everybody loves to pitch in the postseason. It's not going to happen for the Tigers. Surprisingly. Remember in April, thinking that the Tigers going to be the team to beat the American League. Right off the mask. Fine. Oh, Soria strikes out Bourgeois. Be a huge pickup. Two time All Star Joaquin Soria. A nice overhand curveball. 12 to 6 break to it. He was 
23 out of 26 this season and save opportunities with the Tigers. Earlier this year became the first Mexican born pitcher to reach 200 saves in his career. And a good test for him as he faces Votto. Faced Votto once previously, just one at bat. Votto 0 for 1 against him. Two and one, a one-run ball game. The new look Pirates bullpen, been so strong all season, just got stronger with the addition of this man. Two and two. Oh, threw that one right by him. You know, there was some times, though, Greg. I think you you'll agree in the last couple of weeks or so that that bullpen. Uh, been showing a few cracks, so I think this was really good timing. I think it was necessary. Yeah, yeah. They, I think they, they actually had to do it. Get a little reinforcement. Yep. I mean, they're they're okay with with Hughes and certainly Watson and Melanson, but needed one extra piece. Now three and two. Soria walked 11 in 41 innings with the Tigers this season with 36 strikeouts. First time in the National League. And to the years with the Royals, Texas Rangers a couple of seasons. And he walks Votto. With two outs, and it brings up Todd Frazier. What is it about Votto? <laughs> Just incredible. Base three more times tonight. Drawing three walks. The thing that it is with these guys is with Votto, for instance, you're always aware of how good they are. So you're never just trying to, like, oh, guys, I'm going to throw a strike here. It's never about that. So I'm trying to make a real good pitch every mm -hmm. one of them. And then you realize you're trying to throw a three ball pitch. Just tickling the outside corner or something, and you miss a little bit, and you see him jogging down to first. And that, that's exactly what happens. Ball one on Frazier. Soria pitched uh, one scoreless innings in uh, Tampa Bay on Wednesday night. It was his last outing with the Tigers. Front one and two. So they're only going to talk to him. Let's say throwing that hook here. Yeah, a real good one. The one that goes straight down. Keep it away a little bit. Just swing and miss. Don't worry about bouncing it. I'll be there for you. I'll block it. I think that's what he said. Two and two. Well, he blocked it. Did what he said he would do. Everything worked out except for the swing and a miss. And just an inside out, soft single to right. Two on with two outs in the seventh. They made the uh, made the pitch that was called for. Saw so Cervelli go fastball, wanted it inside. That's where he threw it, and it really kind of it worked in a way. It jammed Frazier. He hit it softly, but just was able to just kind of 
a slicer. Softly hit out in the right field. And now Joaquim Soria faces Marlon Bird, who has two hits, has homered. He has five hits in nine at bats in the first two games of this series. Clock that time, right? So probably all bouncing way out there. That hit by Frazier, just the 16th hit by a right handed batter all season. Oh, a nice block indeed. 79 at bats against right handed hitters, 16 hits. Career numbers. Righty, lefty. Two and one on Bird. Even. Two and two, two outs, two on. And oh, 69 miles per hour. And Bird didn't offer on a very close pitch. Wouldn't quite come down low mm. enough. Three two count and line foul by Bird. Votto walked with two outs. Phillips had grounded out. Bourgeois struck out. Frazier jammed on that pitch, single to right. And now Marlon Bird. The 27th pitch of this inning. And you know, Soria not really used to throwing a lot of pitches in any particular frame. And it's still three and two. I think the most pitches he's thrown in an inning this season is 30. Almost there. 27 now. Trying to put away Marlon Bird. Walked him. And they are loaded for Brian Pena. Watching the new guy. Here comes Ray Searage. I think Ray's just coming out now, just give him a little bit of a breather. As you said, he usually uh, isn't throwing this many pitches in one inning. Well, because of that, Pirates have to get Joe Blanton up in the bullpen. Pena with a double and three trips to the plate tonight. Doubled off of Jared Hughes last inning.
struck out against Jeff Locke and bounced out against him. He is a better hitter from this left side, hitting over 300 as a left-handed hitter. Reds have caused all kinds of problems for the Pirates this season, winning 8 of 10. And going back to last year, Reds have taken 10 of the last 12 meetings. And here they are again. 1 0 count. 2 0. Just once this season, before tonight, had Joaquim Soria walked two batters in an inning. Three and O oh on Pena. And now he has thrown more pitches tonight than he has all season in any outing. Uh, really uh, took a long time to get back to the rubber that he got that one in there. It's like he's having a little talk with himself. And again, he's, he's when he first got out there this inning, he was working really quick. Wasn't leaving the rubber. Now, now he's walking around, really slowed it down. Soria, look what I found. How about that little present? Pena can't believe it. Well, he's always been a good fielder. Right? Always been a good fielder. Joaquin Soria. Hello. And that is a scoreless inning. What's the big deal? Debut. Kind of like a, a soft, maybe chop Baltimore hop single. Looks like a line drive in the box score. It's just a simple scoreless inning in the box score. Nothing more. Oh, man. That's a nice play right there. It was an absolute <laughs> rocket back It in was. <laughs> Allegheny Health Network Super Mo will my, slow it down guess considerably. It, it came back a lot faster than it went in. I mean, a lot faster. Pena's reaction is priceless. <laughs> it did. <laughs> like, looking look into at, the dugout. Like, that's not fair. Like, like yeah. look, look what he did. Uh, His new teammates have some a, smiles. That's an old, my, old, my goose right there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> All right, let's score a run. And reenacting the play. <laughs> I 
Talking to Jordy Mercer about it. And you, know, you get those sometimes at shortstop, I'm sure, but what a play I made there, huh? Oh, there it is again. <laughs> How many times are you going to do that? <laughs> Neil Walker 0 for 3. Burke Badenhop is the new pitcher for the Reds. His numbers on the year. is going to give way to De Jesus. We head back to the studio for a game break. And here, uh, Joaquin Soria. Rob makes his Pirates debut with a scoreless inning. It wasn't easy as he retired the first two men, and then it was Joey Votto who drew that walk. Frazier, after getting jammed on that pitch, single to right, then he walked Bird to load them up, and then Pena hit that rocket back to the box. Cardinals are leading the Rockies 2 0, bottom of the fifth in St. Louis. Tony Watson for the eighth. Right off the end of the bat. Pedro checking it out. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. That's a rocket and a nice stab there by Brandon Phillips. Playing over in the hole. Kind of angling back on the. Grass a little bit to get a little longer hop. Another one of those guys, Craig, that a lot of muscle memory on the plays that he makes out of second base. Occasionally you can tell he thought about it when he makes a play. Most everything else on autopilot. Yeah. That's popped up on the right side. Votto. And a one, two, three, top of the eighth. It'll be Tony Watson's turn as Burke Badenhop pitches a scoreless top of the eighth.
Cubs at PNC Park. Tune in. Help us raise money for Pirates charities and local ALS organizations. Purchase VIP bags packed with memorabilia or a chance to take part in a Pirates team ice bucket challenge. Pirates charities on Route Sports Auction Tuesday starting at 6. Visit Pirates.com for more information. Blue moon. I was going to say, which of the Marcells, uh, the Pittsburgh band that uh, made that top hit, Blue Moon, would serenade us. And now it's looking more and more I, I like it. Best. Yeah, that was not good. Oh, wasn't. But that's good. 2018. Next time you see it. That was a great lens on that camera. Yeah, it was really cool. One pitch for Watson, one out. You could see like the ridges on the moon. Sean Rodriguez now at first base. Tony Watson. A little trouble last time he was out there. Very characteristic. Got knocked around. That's a, that really is a, a blue moon event when Tony Tony gives up some hits. Wow, look at that. Whoa. Man. Whoa. It's like the, the what do they call My that? The, hu the Hubble? Yeah, it's the Hubble. No, that's a lens. My goodness. <laughs> what a great shot. Very neat. The full mode just kind of. Mesmerizes you. It really does. It makes it, whatever it is. Those full moons. To, people are kind of goofy, aren't they? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Right. Half moons, quarter moons. Two it's, moons. The, it's either the full moon or the coffee. I don't know what it is. I have had a lot of coffee today. I think it was just that that came last night. It's just still hung with me. Taking care of the pinch hitter, Eugenio Suarez, for the second out. Well, after that miserable game last night, this is so far kind of what the doctor would prescribe to get over that bad feeling with the, the new look bullpen. Here's a, a, a chance for the Pirates to have a, a comeback win and using the Hughes, Soria, Watson, Melanson combination in a tight game. Need to get four more outs. Attempting to bunt for a hit. Billy Hamilton has had plenty of those this year. He'll bunt no matter what. I mean, they're in right on top of him on the corners, and he still tries to bunt. Trying to get it past Watson toward first. Yeah, that's his plan is to try and win a race uh, with Watson to the back. Make uh, Rodriguez field it, and that's what uh, he, he thinks is his best chance of getting on to try to push it that direction. Not with two uh, two strikes, he won't. Since first outing since giving up the four runs on Tuesday. And that's exactly what he and the Pirates needed as well. A one, two, three, eight from Tony Watson.
Friday night rocks. And how about a Friday night block party? That's a, an outside projector watching the game on Root Sports tonight. Thanks to Chrissy Thomas for that. It's like a big screen at the stadium. There's Ryan Matthews. See the opponent bat average was all too high. About 300. Matthews gave up three runs last night in the blowout. Got the first two outs, then gave up a Polanco double. He hit Starling Marte. Andrew McCutcheon had an RBI single. Ramos Ramirez, a two run double. Sean Rodriguez had a base hit. Pirates trying to down the Reds, and here is Jeff Decker, who pitched last night after batting. Decker was a pinch hitter in the eighth inning and bounced out and then took the hill through the whole inning. Yeah. Gave up a zero. Trying to get an insurance runner too here. And picked by Frazier out of the air. Decker lines out to third. Nissan Road ahead. Tomorrow night it is Garrett Cole against the rookie Raciel Iglesias and then Charlie Morton will pitch on Sunday. The Reds haven't announced it, but it looks like Kyle Waldrop is going to come up from the minor leagues and make his debut. So the Pirates are going to see four rookies in this series. Would have seen Johnny Cueto and Mike Leake. Those two pitchers were traded. Take nothing for granted because David Holmberg gave up just two runs in six innings last night to pick up his first big league win or his first win of the season. Polanco on base a couple of times. Mark Melanson will be aiming for his 33rd save. Two and two. Starling Marte has a ten game hitting streak, singled in a run in the sixth. Cubs were busy. Dan Heron, one of the players acquired late this afternoon. They also picked up Tommy Hunter. And out of play. Amazing amount of action, wasn't it? Oh, Is just. It I mean, I'm sure someone will. Big names going to, everywhere. Yeah, somebody's got to find out where this ranks this week in terms of activity. I think I read we're only three teams, at least as of about three o'clock this afternoon. Only three of the 30 teams had not made uh, a trade. In the air to center, Hamilton back. Two outs. Trying to th quickly think of the, the teams and every team I think of in my head, I know that they uh, the Padres did not. Correct? Did the Yankees? I don't think the Yan Yankees did not. No, uh, Padres. Uh, Everybody they, thought they, they the were Padres were going to be the busiest Up team. Upton was going to go somewhere. Uh, yeah, but he did. never did. Um, I think the White did the White Sox. I don't think the White Sox did either. Did they? Those are the three teams. 
sure the Yankees didn't do anything? I don't think so. I thought they did, they, they, they did something very late. I guess the Yankees did get Dustin Ackley from Seattle. So it means only two teams then. Regardless, it was a busy, busy week. And the Pirates, of course, acquired Ramos Ramirez, Joaquin Soria, Joe Blanton was uh, picked up off of waivers. Traded for Ramirez and Soria. Jay Happ will be joining the Pirates. Looks like he'll be taking over the rotation spot for now for that man AJ Burnett who was placed on the disabled list and we'll see what happens when Michael Morse arrives all in the air to shallow right bird and the Pirates go down in order just a one run lead for Mark the Shark in Cincy. Our coverage starts at 6.30 with Pirates pregame, presented by W.B. Mason here on Root Sports. Garrett Cole will be looking for his 15th win. As the Pirates lead the Reds here by one run, going to the bottom of the ninth inning. The Major League leader in saves, Mark Melanson, has 32 of them. No wiggle room, and he's going to face the top of the order. Yep, they're going to have to definitely earn this one. Uh, no room to make any mistakes. The main guys are coming up. Brandon Phillips will lead off one for eight lifetime against him. Jason Bourgeois, 0 for one. Joey Votto one for five. That one hit a home run. Jay Bruce is available, and Bruce is a three for seven lifetime against him. Phillips picked up his hit in the second inning off of Jeff Locke, who's in line to get the W. Locke went five innings, gave up three runs on five hits. Jared Hughes. Gave up a home run to Marlon Bird in the sixth. Joaquin Soria, a scoreless seventh, and Watson, Tony Watson, a one, two, three, eight. Strike on Phillips. Mark 
Melanson. It's Phillips on the curveball. I think Melanson really uh, got to where he perfected that curveball earlier in the year. You know, when the first uh, month of the season when Velocity was down a little bit on that cutter. And he, he had to rely, I think, on the curveball a little bit more. And it's really become a nice swing and miss pitch for him. So even though his velocity was down, uh, he took made, advantage made, yeah, of it. And, and maybe and, kind of a blessing yeah. in disguise, a silver lining of sorts. Absolutely. Here comes the hook. Into the center field. One two pitch. Brandon Phillips singles to center. Time run aboard. Now this one uh, is not going to be very pretty. This was uh, not his best effort with the curveball. Watch the location. He just left it down the middle of the plate, belt high. A mistake pitch. Try and bunt him to second. Bourgeois with a hit in this game. Uh, a fielder's choice in the second that brought in a tying run at the time Lorenzen, the pitcher. Last time up, he struck out against Soria. He was doubled off first base on a fly ball by Votto. And he gets the bunt down, and Melanson thinks about second and throws to first. One three, and here comes Joey Votto. Red's playing for a tie here. So kind of going by the book when you're the home team. Have a tendency to play for a tie when you're on the road, you got to play for a win. But you don't have to do anything, but that's kind of the, the old by the book sayings. He's walked three times in this one, hit a ball to the wall in right field in the fifth, that was tracked down by Gregory Polanco, it was turned into a double play. It's outfield. That's how they play Votto. Real deep out in right field. Blanco. It's kind of a, a, a compromise so when you're playing defense in this situation. You, you get the tying run at second base. You don't want to get too deep to where you don't have a play at the plate on a base hit. But the go ahead or the the winning run is at the plate that so you don't want so you want to play back you don't want to give up a double either and let the winning run get in the scoring position so kind of in between a rock and a hard place about as far as your depth goes you know I guess if on offense and you you say you got to play for, to win on the road so I guess when you're on defense, that goes also. So with the tying run at second, you would worry about the double and you'd play in and try to stop the runner from scoring. If you're going by the old thing. Pickoff try. Like Kevin Lance is well deliberate with that yeah. throw. It was, uh, I think main thing he was worried about there just make sure it doesn't get thrown away. Kind of surprised he even threw it. Joey Votto has reached base safely in eight of ten plate appearances this series. He looks over toward the left side of the infield. Ramirez at third, and this pitch just misses, but off the line. Gong trying to stay as close as he can towards second.
overtime call. Pirates have lost six straight games here at Great American Ballpark going back to last season. Their last win was on September 26th. They won it three to one, and Mark Melanson earned the save. Phillips dancing off second base. Looked as though he's going to take off for third, and it's fouled out of play. Now it's one and two on Votto. And that ball just just enough in on Votto's hands. Two of the best at, at their crafts. Melanson and Votto and there's a young Reds fan trying to rally his team. The rally hat. Oh almost offered and didn't. The pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Joe West said no. You know what I liked about that one that Reds fan, the, the young man, as, as we watch the check swing again. It, it's not about their season, it's about tonight. You know, he's, they're going nowhere. They've traded a couple of their best pitchers. But he badly wants to win tonight, this game tonight. That's a good fan, yeah. Two and two on Votto, runner at second, one out. One run game. And that's a good cutter. Three and two. He lays that's off. A great cutter. This is right where Cervelli wants it. it, it right where Melanson wanted it, right Man, where everybody wanted didn't it. Didn't get the call. Except for Kerwin Danley didn't want it. Kerwin Danley calls it ball three. So Melanson instead of the strikeout has to throw another pitch here and now it's three and two. Paying attention to Phillips. Less than two outs and men in scoring position. Votto hits 340. Gets a piece. Wow. Barely stayed alive. I mean, there are players locked in that we see, you know, throughout the course of a season, Bob, that we're talking about the home run hitters and such when Bryce Harper was coming in. A lot of talk, but. This guy, I don't know that there's a, a tougher out in baseball right now. Well, one of the differences between, like, when Harper come to the plate, I was thinking about the home run all the time. Right, yeah. Now, Votto certainly has home yeah. run power, but that's, it's different. You're yeah. not thinking, okay, he's going to, you know, he might hit one out. No, you're just like, he's a, just a tough yeah. out, as you said. Another 3-2 pitch. Locked him. Fourth walk. And brings up Todd Frazier. Fourth walk for Votto. And on base nine times in 11 plate appearances this series. So Frazier, who is one for four. Times as he played the role of hero. His uh, big all star season starting third baseman right here at Great American Ballpark. The all star game. Now trying to at least tie it, if not win it. Todd Frazier in his career 
two for eight versus Melanson. Now he has not been recently swinging the bat all that well, Frazier. And perhaps the Pirates are catching him at a good time, but still so dangerous. And ball one. Remember, Melanson did not get a call from Kerwin Danley on a 2 2 pitch to Votto. It should have been strike three. And get Frazier hit a ground ball at an infielder. Ground ball in the left field, a base hit. Here comes Phillips. Here comes the throw to the plate. It's strong. He is out of there. Marte fires out Phillips at the plate with a one hop strike. What a throw, what a play by Starling Marte. Coming up with a throw like this, this is just like knocking in the winning run late in the game when you're hitting. I mean, no chance. It's just an awesome toss. Coming in right on the money. Look at that. that look how low that throw was going in there. Watch it again. Absolute one hot bullet right on the money. Brandon Phillips waved home by Jim Riggleman. They are going to review this to see if Cervelli was blocking the plate. No. Cervelli was blocking the plate way less, if anything, than Pena was earlier. Remember that That's play? That's a great play. A great yeah, yeah. Pe call Pe on your point. Pena was all over the baseline. There was no way, uh, you know, you could even see home plate. Yeah. Now, in this case, you can see after he made the catch, he kind of moved into him to tag him. But, the, I mean, I don't know. Really, the throw I mean, kind of took him to where he... Yeah, this is... I mean... The, of course, and it's, we've talked about this play at the plate before a hundred times. It, it's silly. The, the whole rule is absurd. Yeah, totally absurd. I mean, th this is just a great. It's a great baseball play. Baseball and play. End of story. It's, and there's no way they should be slowing this thing down, even it, looking at it. it, it it's a great it baseball should, play. Should be done be with a it. Question. Yep. Real speed. I don't like the f fact they're taking so long here, Greg. Oh, now they're done. Okay, I like that. He's out. So Cervelli applies the tag as Marte delivers the strike and saves the run and keeps the Pirates up five to four. But not over yet because Marlon Bird will be coming to the plate. Another look. Man's going to really good. I, I think he's going to win several gold yeah, gloves before no it's all said and yeah. done in his career. It could, once he gets a little more consistent yeah. on defense, he's been pretty consistent this year. Yeah, yeah. you can see can him growing pace, and getting yeah. better and better. But he's got uh, so many great tools to, as for a defensive outfielder. Incredible arm, the great speed. His ninth outfield assist to match Matt Kemp for the National League lead. Ball one on Bird. Again, work to be done here. Bird, two hits, including a home run on base three times tonight. And think about this that uh, Melanson has not retired a batter. 
when you think about it, because uh, Bourgeois sacrificed and Marte throwing out Phillips. So two hits and a walk and two line drives. 2 0 now on Bird. Falls behind three and zero. Oh. Jim Riggleman, third base coach for the Reds, went ahead and waved home Phillips. He'll certainly be waving home Votto. Yeah, right now, he's probably having second thoughts. Why did I do that with just one out? Could have made the decision to go bases loaded, and one out. 3 1 count. Starling Marte caught the edge. Throws out Brandon Phillips. Yes, yeah, one thing to make that decision with one out against a lesser arm to try and score Phillips with one out against Marte. It's an iffy de decision at best. The strike call. Three one count on Marlon Bird. And now it's three and two. Wow. Three and two. Dropped the hook in there. Wasn't that a curveball? Yeah, it looked like it. Cervelli right away out to talk with Melanson immediately. Oh, yeah. Three one hook right there. Well, what do you do, Bert, Bob? Bob? Looking for that. What do you do? I don't know, Greg. I never pitched a ninth. Three and two. Brian Pena on deck. Lanson will do that. I've seen it in the past. Turn with that runner over at second. 3 2 count on Marlon Bird. Toward left field. Here comes Marte. Did he hold on? He did it again. This guy just saved the game. He himself raises the Jolly Roger. It's a Marte Parte. Unbelievable. Saved the game twice. Starling Marte took this Pirates team, carried the team on his shoulders, or his arm in this case, and glove. Wow, what a play. And the other outfielders are tipping their caps to Starling Marte. Two great ones in the same inning. Wow. To save the game. Let's hope that hand and wrist are okay. What a ninth inning. Oh, amazing. Back-to-back -back plays by that left fielder. Phenomenal. Uh, that's just 